somebody's got to pay. And in all fairness, there's a limit to which you can help council tenants if it's at the expense of ratepayers. Ratepayers who live in an estate like this, a private estate, with one street lamp for 50 houses and a road like this. And there's another thing. How far can they now help their own people? Because if the kit is empty, how many council houses can they now build? But what really scares me about the Claycross councillors, and what I regard as absolutely fundamental in its importance, is their methods and their attitude to the law. They're past masters of the instant demonstration, of the technique of shutting people down and not giving them a hearing. If you come across them, disagree with them, you're liable to get trampled on, or you're liable to be described in contemptuous terms as a lily-white Democrat. Now that is getting too close to the tactics of the thug and the bully boy. When it comes to their attitude to the law, it's their defiance of the Housing Finance Act that's made Clay Cross a household word. They say that because it's a Tory law, they don't have to obey it. Because they've been elected on a platform of opposing the act, they've got a mandate not to implement it. But what would David Skinner say? If a Tory councillor stood on a platform of opposing public education because he didn't believe in paying rates, he would say that the law of the land required a council to provide public education, and he'd be right. And what about people who'd say, I don't believe in rates, I won't pay rates? I bet your life that if someone doesn't pay rates in Clay Cross, he's prosecuted. What's the difference anyway between Tory councillors saying they won't obey labour laws and Labour councillors saying they won't obey Tory laws. You can't pick and choose between laws and say, these are laws I like, I'll obey them. That's a law I don't like, to hell with it. Because that's the road to anarchy, that's the end of democracy. The last time people talked about lily-white Democrats and to hell with laws they didn't like, it was Oswald Mosley and the British Union of Fascists. Okay. To the Clay Cross councillors, I'm a lily-white Democrat. And I say if you want to bring about a radical change in society, you've got to start with a respect for the law. Because if you don't, then in the end, it'll be the strong-arm boys of the right who'll win. That's the kind of bitter controversy that Clay Cross produces. But here in the town itself, it's hardly noticed. It's now the 10th of January, 15 months after the Housing Finance Act came into force. What's happened so far? Well, the council house rents are still half those prevailing over the English border. The housing commissioner, well, he's eight miles away in Chesterfield, trying to increase rents by one pound by remote control. And so far, without any success. That's because the council's rent collectors are under orders not to accept the extra pound. And the extra team of rent collectors the commissioner's put in, well, they face a rent strike by many of the tenants and also an order to the wardens of the old people's bungalows to report bogus rent collectors to the police. But in Clay Cross, that's only a minor hazard. In fact, I know of several tenants who have not fed the dog for over a week, so they could be waiting for them a an half warm welcome. The government may hope that the problem will go away when Clay Cross ceases to exist as a local government unit at the end of March. But the controlling Labour group on the new North East Derbyshire Authority has resolved not to implement the Housing Finance Act. So Clay Cross may not vanish, it may spread. O oh God, the King of Righteousness, lead us, we pray thee, in the ways of justice and of peace. Inspire us to break down all oppression and wrong, to gain for every man his due reward, and from every man his due service, that each may live for all, and all may care for each. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you.